What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield Spike Myth Cup video. Today I just want to take a minute to talk about uh, five Pokemon that I have some feelings about um, as far as their viability in Spike Myth Cup and the ability just to get away with running them. Uh, every, I feel like every format I make a sleeper pick video, which is basically just me spouting bad opinions about Pokemon that I really like. Um, but people, uh, for some reason, listen to me, so I'm going to give my five bad opinions about these five bad quotations good pokemon uh in spike myth cup so yeah uh, obviously spike myth cup is a format that is not official people keep asking me when is the spike myth cup it is not a official format it is just a format that we play and have fun with uh and it is series seven no dynamax if you haven't played it yet you need to play it it's you're kind of behind the <laughs> you're kind of far behind everyone else but it's a really good format trust me uh turning off dynamax allows you to get away with a lot of fringe options um I like running Galarian Darmanitan in this format because it's just really funny. He's, he's got a lot of monkey business. I made a whole video about it. Um, and Noivern is also pretty viable. I got away with running Tapu Bulu Trick Room. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do in this format with Dynamax being gone because Dynamax has sort of a rich get richer effect um, is the way that I like to describe it. Things like Landers become busted because uh, now I have access to Stab Fly uh, or Flying Moves. But yeah, with Dynamax turned off, I feel like Gen 8's actually pretty balanced with the exception of a few things like Urshifu and Regieleki. Um, but yeah, it, it, it allows you to build cohesive teams with really strange Pokemon. So today's video is going to be five Pokemon that I think are underutilized and are a, a bit of a sleeper pick. I know Heatran is not a sleeper pick anymore, but when I first thought of making this video, it kind of was. So I'm going to do it anyways, uh, and I'm going to talk about it. So yeah. Let's get into it. If you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And I'll and let's just let's just like get into it, you know. And also comment down below the fringe Pokemon you think are sleeper picks. So yeah, Heatran, we're gonna start off with you. It is a great Pokemon. Naganadel rising to like the top of usage in this format uh, made Heatran so good, and it also combos well with Cresselia, another Pokemon that came out of um, non-Dynamax formats, took a break during Dynamax, and is now really awesome. Uh, it has access to Flash Fire, which makes it immune to fire moves, uh, allowing you to switch in on stuff like Heat Waves from opposing Pokemon Flamethrower from Naganadel um, and Flare Blitz from Incineroar. You get a fire boost to your moves and then you just attack. Obviously, it has Flame Body, but I think the immunity from Flash Fire makes it so much easier to play. Um, and yeah, uh, Heat Wave is great stab coming off a of base 130 special attack and its bulk's phenomenal. It's going to be able to eat uh, even super effective hits. Uh, if you're running a Shooka Berry, uh, you'll be able to eat coverage ground moves like high horsepower from uh, Rillaboom, which is a very common move to have on it right now, uh, and then hit it back with a Heat Wave and likely one-shot it, uh, as long as they're not like Assault Vest. But yeah, uh, it has access to Earth Power to deal with Opposing Heatran, as well as Stack Attack uh, and um, Opposing Steel Types, and of course uh, Incineroar, which is a very common Pokemon. Uh, if you have any chip on the Incineroar and they're not running Shooka Berry, that Earth Power should, for the most part, KO it. And it's like a very flexible Pokemon. Uh, it's able to come to a lot of matchups, uh, wall out like the grass types on their team, operate both under Trick Room and under Tailwind. You see it in both situations. If you see a Tailwind Heatran, you know they're going to be running like 107, 108 speed. And if you're seeing a Trick Room Pokemon or a Trick Room Heatran, they're usually going to be like 98 or 97, mainly because like even though it's a Trick Room Pokemon, it can also operate outside of it. It has like a middling speed tier. It's a, it's a weird Pokemon, you know, but it's it's very good in its flexibility. It has a lot of things it can do in a game, and I think it's just very good. Also, it does have access to like really cool uh, tools like Taunt, uh, but that's not super common. For the most part, you're going to see like a moveset like this. Um, sometimes you'll see like Specs Heatran. I don't think it's that great. I think that Safety Goggles and Shooka Berry are the two best items for it, since Safety Goggles allows you to operate under Trick Room with it. Uh, uh, very safely versus a Moongus. Um, it does have access to an exclusive move in Magma Storm, but I don't think that's a really great move because of the uh, inconsistency of it. Willowis is kind of cool, but yeah, I think this is just going to be the standard set that you run. You deal with pretty much everything that isn't named Urshifu, Tapu Fini, and uh, Landorus in this format, and you like just do well in everything. So yeah, Heatran, very good Pokemon. You should definitely be using it. Next up is Crobat. I think Crobat is woefully underutilized in this format. It's got 130 base speed, making its speed tie with Tapu Koko, a Pokemon that you don't see that often, so the only two Pokemon that are really faster than it are going to be Dragapult and Regieleki. Obviously Regieleki is a little bit 
common right now, so you have to be careful. But if you have like a fake out Pokemon next to it, you can Tailwind fake out. Like Rillaboom is like a great partner for it, right? You fake out Tailwind, uh, you get that instant speed boost, um, and Inner Focus makes it so they can't flinch or intimidate your Crobat. Uh, so your damage output's also very consistent. Brave Bird with a Sharp Beak uh, and 148 investment off of Jolly Nature will always one-shot 4 HP or 4 defense uh, Rillabooms. Not Rillaboom. Um, Urshifu, which means, you know, for the most part, you'll be Okoing uh, Rillabooms as well, Zarinas, Amoongus. Uh, that Sharp Beak does a lot to boost it, and it allows you a little bit more bulk. Uh, the reason I think bulk is kind of important on Crobat is because um, without the bulk, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to get off like that second move. And I think that it has a good, uh, a good, uh, what's it called? Variety of support moves at its disposal. Um, obviously it used to have super fang, which is one of the best moves that you could run on it. Uh, but it lost it since that's a tutor move exclusively. So now if you're not a coward, you run hypnosis, uh, because hypnosis is an amazing move that works 60% of the time, all the time. Uh, and it's just really good beyond that couple of other fun tools um you know taunt is going to be able to uh, allow you to stop opposing trick rooms from stuff like Cresselia, uh dust clops porygon 2 that sort of thing uh very useful tool and yeah i think it's a really great pokemon the unflinchable tailwind makes it more comparable to suicune than a whimsicott in fact i would say if suicune and whimsicott had a baby uh for one it'd be super ugly but uh, it would look like a crobat and it would work like a crobat so that's really cool and also grass types are great this format, so being a natural counter to them is very good. Galarian Weezing. This Pokemon is, if I had to like rank these guys as far as most underrated to least underrated, this is the most underrated Pokemon by far. I think this is actually like a top tier Pokemon in this format. That's my hot take of the video. This whole video is a hot take, but this is my biggest hot take. Weezing, Galarian Weezing specifically, is a top tier Pokemon that people are too scared to use because they don't want to be the guy using Galarian Weezing. Taunt, Protect, Dazzling Gleam, Sludge Bomb. These are all really, really good moves, and Poison Fairy is a pretty decent typing if you know how to not get Earth Powered. Like, Landorus is scary for it, but yeah, you know, you know what? If you run like a Sugarberry on this thing, you're gonna eat Landorus Earth Powers too because you turn off Sheer Force. It's a great Pokemon. You turn off every ability, no intimidates, no inner focus, um, no Urshifu anything, really. You wall out both Urshifus because if it's naturally high defense, it's resistance to fighting and dark moves, and Surging Strikes bounces off of it. And guess what? You can protect on the Urshifu because you turn off Unseen Fist. Uh, Rillaboom get, it gets absolutely like annihilated by Galarian Weezing because uh, of Sludge Bomb. And yeah, and, and Tapu Fini doesn't like it. Tapu Lele doesn't get terrain, so you can actually like invest this thing to take a Psychic from it and Sludge Bomb it back. It can do a lot of things. Turning off abilities on the right team is really busted. Oh, guess what? Hey, Whimsicott, you, you want to go for Prankster Tailwind? Uh, sorry about that, bud. I taunted you because you don't have Prankster. It's a good Pokemon. I don't know why people aren't using it. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, but yeah, obviously, you know, you tend to see it with Regigigas. I don't think Regigigas is actually super good this format, uh, but it can work on a lot of teams. <laughs> it is the actual best uh, best Urshifu counter. Like, you know, Tapu Fini can eat its heart out. This is the best fairy type and the prettiest fairy type at that too. Araquanid. Araquanid is actually a really good Pokemon. I think that it's, uh, I don't think it's underutilized. I think we see it about as much as I would expect to see it. Uh, but it does have a lot of fun tools. Uh, being able to uh, switch in on a lot of special attackers, especially Naganadel and uh, Landorus. Both Landoruses obviously get absolutely annihilated by Araquanid. Uh, but it's high special defense uh, in general bulk, uh, comboed with Water Bubble, making it immune to um, burns or burns, making it immune to burn while also uh, giving it a resistance to fire moves is pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, and doubling the power of water moves is obviously super busted. I think safety goggles is great for it because Amoongus is a really strong trick room Pokemon. It allows you to bypass redirection on that guy. Uh, and it does well into a lot of things. Clefairy Spectre is actually pretty nice since Spectre can't burn you. Um, you're naturally bulky. You'll be able to go for a liquidation into Clefairy. Like if you helping hand liquidation, Clefairy just goes down. And then the next turn you liquidation to the Spectre, you know, use a Pokemon to help you out if you have like an Incineroar next to it. Like that's a great lead versus those two. So yeah, uh, Landorus gets annihilated. Resist Landorus is hits, uh, Incineroar gets annihilated, Stack Attack gets annihilated. Wide Guard is a phenomenal tool for blocking stuff like Regieleki Electroweb if you're brave enough. Um, 
you know, it's running a brave nature. But uh, if you're brave enough, uh, blocking rock slide, heat wave, a lot of fun tools, and it gets icy wind. It gets icy wind, which is going to be useful for the rest of your team, because if you want, you know, you can protect icy wind, slow down like an opposing Landorus if they were brave enough to stay on in you. Uh, and then, or even like Naganadel, you can slow down an opposing Naganadel and now like your partner Landorus outspeeds and you one shot it. A lot of fun stuff you can do with Arachnid. Very underutilized Pokemon. Very good Pokemon. I would say on par with Heatran and Weezing as far as like how good I think they are. This is the Pokemon I feel the least strongly about, but I do think is good nonetheless. Um, not Lightning Rod, Electric Surge. So, Pincurchin has two Pokemon it really competes with. It is, uh, Tapu Koko, the, uh, other Electric Surge Pokemon, and Regieleki, the other Tapu Koko, uh, the better Tapu Koko. So, in, in terms of ranking of viability, I would go Regieleki, Tapu Koko, Pincurchin, but honestly, Regieleki is just, you know, not even comparable to those two, and Tapu Koko and Pincurchin have, uh, differing roles. Tapu Koko, for the most part in this format, is an Assault Vest Pokemon that likes to run Electroweb, it likes to run, uh, Nature's Madness, uh, it has access to stuff like Volt Switch, U-Turn if you want, Dazzling Gleam. It's a Fairy type Regieleki that doesn't hit as hard. That's what it does, and it has good support moves. Pinkurchin is different in the fact that it is a actually pretty decent. Um, no, don't you know? Don't get mad at me. I think it's a pretty decent Electro type in this format. Under Trick Room, uh, if you give it a Magnet, you could also give it a Salt Vest if you wanted to. But I think Magnet's probably like one of the better items for it. You're going to one-shot quite a lot of things because uh, 91th base special attack, while that isn't that strong, it has access to both Electric Surge and Rising Voltage. It's the only Pokemon in the game with both of those things, meaning its damage output is actually relatively high. Versus Stack Attacka, a really bulky Pokemon, uh, you know, 61 HP, 101 Special Defense, uh, your Rising Voltage is going to be a 79% chance to two-shot. Obviously, you know, Body Press could hurt from this thing. Uh, you don't underspeed it, but if your opponent isn't running zero speed for some reason, you know, body press, you end up winning the war. You know, two rising voltage KOs is, or KOs it usually. Two body presses usually doesn't KO you. Um, but if we, oh, sorry, that's, wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, sorry. I, I was making sure I didn't put anything in wrong. Uh, but other Pokemon. Celesteela is actually really good in this format. Uh, Celesteela does not like taking rising voltage from this thing in electric terrain. Wait, why is this saying that it lives? You don't live this. Oh, sorry. No, Celesteela is not grounded. It depends if the opponent is grounded. Um, but yeah, it's a two-shot on Pokemon like Celesteela. Tapu Fini obviously um, always gets like annihilated by this thing because with Electric Terrain up, you get that boost. And both Urshifu forms, even the Dark Urshifu, does get one shot by Rising Voltage. You don't even need the Magnet for that one. So you could kind of mix and match this thing's uh, set. You know, you're you're bulky enough because you have 95 and 85 in your defenses. Your 48 HP is like where you like leave a lot to be desired, but you're bulky enough where you can actually do quite a bit uh, and like decrease your special attack to make it so you're like one-shotting the things that you need to one-shot and then two-shotting the things that you need to two-shot, uh, obviously. But yeah. Uh, also, being a slow Pokemon with Electric Surge is actually really cool because you always get your terrain off versus any other terrain setting Pokemon. Your terrain will always go up. So you have terrain dominance on lead, which is really cool, versus um, uh, teams with like Sleep Powder or Amoongus with like Spore. Uh, you're going to be able to switch in on that uh, and not only underspeed the Amoongus, but um, also be able to block any kind of Spore on your teammates, which is very, very cool. And obviously, water types are great. You know, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Tapu Fini. Uh, flying types are good. We see some Tornadus in this format. It is a good Pokemon. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's good. Like, if if I thought everything on this list was good, this is like top of mid bordering on good, which is why it is on my sleeper pick list. These are sleepers, um, except he prevents sleep. So yeah, that was my um, not annual, but like biannual because I think we have like two major formats that I make this video for every year. That's my uh, biannual or semi-annual or whatever the word is, um, bad opinion video. I thought I would share it with you guys today because I do think all these Pokemon are pretty viable and I do intend on using all of them. I've used you, I've used you. We just have to use these guys. I think Pincursion's probably next. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your opinions in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.